So Seattle's most notorious homeland encampment, the one that I've talked about, fireworks shooting off onto the freeway, multiple fires, shootings, had three shootings, you know, just all kinds of craziness. And it's within a block of a local elementary school. This, this is an encampment that needs to be shut down immediately. It's underneath a bridge, it's underneath the Ship Canal Bridge. And <laughs> the powers that be decided, you know what? We're not going to sweep the camp, but we're going to clean it up. Here's one of the things we're going to do. We're going to hand out fire extinguishers so the drug addicts in the encampment can put out their own fires. We need to check this out. What is the deal going on in Seattle? Here we go. If you're enjoying this video, you're not going to want to miss out on the content we've got on our members only section, reasonabletv.com. Let's take a super quick peek. We typically release a couple of new episodes per week and it's content that we can't share elsewhere because it oftentimes will get censored. So we've just decided to take the good stuff and put it in our members only section. You can watch it there. Thanks in advance for taking a look. Yeah, this, this has become, this has become crazy town with this kind of stuff going on. And from this kind of stuff going on, I, I, I mean, you've got some encampments that are wildly out of control. I mean, literally, you've got nutso stuff going on. I mean, it's just shocking. What's it going to take for the government to do their job and basically sweep things out? The underlying issue here, and th the reason we're being told that this encampment hasn't been swept out is that the King County Regional Housing Authority believes that they have to have permanent housing available for all of these people before they sweep the camp. Here's what's going to happen. Vast majority of these people in this encampment are not going to take an offer of housing because they want to keep doing their lifestyle of drugs. They want to keep stealing from their local target because that's exactly what they're doing right now from this encampment. They're stealing from the local community, stealing from people's homes, breaking into people's homes. I mean, the, the, the number of crime stories that I'm covering in this area, I mean, it's wild. It's wild. And it's not going to stop until you kind of break this up a little bit. And you got to do a sweep. You got to do a sweep. That's, you know, you're going to play that whack-a-mole game, but it's what's got to happen in the short term because you've got too many people in a certain section. And, you know, it's just, it, it's not good for anybody, let alone the parents who are just trying to get their kids to and from school. And you've got just this absolute mayhem going on underneath the freeway. Even the governor, even the governor, Inslee, wants to clean up Ship Canal and Camp and as soon as hum humanly possible because it's such an embarrassment. I mean, this is, this is an embarrassment to Seattle. And yet everybody's like, no, we need to have housing. You don't need to have housing for these folks. You need to sweep them out. You need to keep that going because you can't have, you know, this many people living underneath I-5. Crews began cleaning a notorious homeless encampment in North Seattle Thursday morning. Cleaning. They're not sweeping. They're cleaning it up. We sent the, we sent the cleaning lady to the encampment. While the encampment is not being removed, a Washington State Department of Transportation spokesman told Como News Thursday morning that contractor crews are picking up garbage, repairing fences, cleaning needles, and more at the Ship Canal Bridge encampment at I-5 in Wallingford. And the end more? is bringing these individuals, these drug addicts, fire extinguishers. Because we know we've had so many fires. Now, why are we having so many fires in the homeless encampments? Well, you know, the chemicals that are used in tents and tarps, when flame is applied to them, they tend to whoosh, go up. And you know what happens when you have a propane tank that catches fire? It explodes. Yeah, we've had those. And you know what happens when you're lighting your fentanyl, you know, you're smoking your fentanyl, you got to vaporize it so you can smoke it with your crack pipe. You know what happens when, you know, it catches your tent on fire? That's right. It goes up in flames, it goes up in flames. So the number of the amount of resources we are spending, fire departments are spending responding to fires and homeless encampments is just crazy. It's crazy. So our solution here. Washington State Department of Transportation sends in cleanup crews. They secure the site. They put up more fen fencing. They secure the fencing. They don't kick the people out. They secure the fencing. They clean it up all nice for them so that next time when they do the final sweep, they can just do it all again. They pick up all the needles because these people are so lazy and live in such filth. 
and alongside along with needles they're going to pick up human feces they're going to you know clean up all kinds of crazy stuff these people pee in their own in bottles in water bottles because there's remnants of fentanyl in there and they believe that they can get high from it you know get a little bit high drinking your own urine so you've got that going on so you know there's a large contingent that believes in housing first well, if we just take these addicts and put them into housing you know they're going to be on their way to recovery these folks don't want recovery. And most of them will tell you right up front, we do not want recovery. We want to continue living this lifestyle. This is what we want to do. So as much housing as you, you want to try and put together, you know, we're being asked as taxpayers to foot the bill for billions of dollars, billions of dollars towards 15,000, 22,000, 23,000 units of housing. It's not housing we need, it's treatment. You need treatment and you need laws that Criminalize this behavior so that they're not encouraged to keep going out and stealing from the community because that's how they're paying for this stuff. Yeah, drugs aren't free. Drugs aren't free. They've come way down in price. They've come down in price from 40, 50 bucks a pill to 20 bucks a pill last fall, you know, late 2022. Now we're getting down to a buck a pill, a couple of bucks a pill. Doesn't take much. You don't have to steal much stuff and you can make that happen. And even if you get caught for stealing the stuff in the areas where these encampments are ongoing, you're not going to do any time. The judge isn't even going to probably hold you. Oh, it's only your 45th offense. It's okay. You come back on your own time. We'll square this up. I'm sure you're a good human being because, you know, equity. I want to make sure this is all good. While the encampment is not being removed, they're doing all that stuff. Governor Jay Inslee on Tuesday said he wanted to put a halt to the encampment as soon as humanly possible. Well, everybody wants to see that. That's a normal citizen. Here's the thing. The people living in that community voted for the most part for the policies that are in place that allowed this to happen. So folks, if you live in Seattle, if you live near this encampment and you're being impacted, the kids living near this school that's being impacted with less than a mile, or no, it's less than a block away from this encampment. You know, if you're being impacted, you got to make that vote count. And Seattle is slowly taking a look and going, you know what? Maybe some of our policies aren't really working in our favor. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, we're going we're gonna to have to rethink that. You got a whole bunch of city council positions that are going to come up in the next election. Make that vote count. You need to go with somebody who's maybe a little bit more moderate and dare I say, a Republican. Because Republicans are typically a little bit tougher on this stuff. They don't take the stance of, you know what, it's all good. Everybody just does their own thing. And that's how you end up with this situation, right? Decriminalize drugs decriminalize living on the streets, decriminalize criminal activity that allows these people to continue their lifestyle. And if you want to argue with me, that's fine. But let's go hang out in the middle of a homeless encampment for like an hour at night. Yeah, on a Friday night. Let's, let's go do that. And you tell me what you think is going on. It's a party. These people are ramped up and they are partying. Skid Row in LA is one enormous party 24 7. It's drugs, 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 drugs. So that's how you get here. And so, what's our Department of Transportation doing? Oh, they're, you know, they're putting the fences up. They're making it harder for people to get cars into this encampment. Cars, automobiles are just going to drive into this, you know, place that we are trespassing on Department of Transportation land. How do we allow this to happen? And we're going to put the fences up. You know, we're going to try and keep the people in that are already in and people out from coming in. We're going to clean up their needles for them. We're going to clean up their garbage for them. We're going to hand out fire extinguishers. This is what we're doing until this issue could be resolved. Hmm. Yeah. We need action there, Inslee said. It's unacceptable to have a housing encampment under I-5 and the Ship Canal Bridge. We want to end the encampment as soon as humanly possible. The neighbors deserve that, and I think we have a reasonable plan to get that job done. What is it? Because we haven't heard it. All we've heard is that, yeah, don't have enough housing. You know, I watched Jonathan Cho go down to Olympia and hit up one of our representatives there and say, hey, where in the policy does it say that we have to have housing for these individuals before we can do a sweep of a dangerous, notorious, illegal encampment? 
And, you know, the representative couldn't really come up with anything. So we've got, you know, we've got an entity, the King County Regional Housing Authority, that's claiming they can't sweep it because they don't have the housing, the permanent housing to do it. And and that you got other officials, you know, in government just basically stating, no, no, that's not the case. You can still sweep it. I mean, there's nothing holding people back. So, you know, we've got this multiple governmental entities that are just like, ah, oh, it's that, no, it's that, no, oh, it's, it's them over, no, it's, it's, it's them, you know, we're waiting on this, we're doing this. Meanwhile, the residents are the parents in this community, the business owners in this community. One of the stories that I read last week was you got a bike shop nearby this encampment, yeah, you know, broken into and been broken into multiple times. And you know what the police told the owner of the bike shop? You should move your business to Bellevue. <laughs> I mean, that's where I am. You know, I mean, it's kind of like, and we live in Bellevue because we don't want to tolerate this kind of nonsense that's happening just a few miles away across Lake Washington. So, and our police force doesn't tolerate this type of behavior. Our community doesn't tolerate this kind of behavior. More and more of it is coming across the lake into our community. It's coming. I mean, you know, you can't stop a massive in-migration of people who want to live the drug lifestyle. So the cleanup began around 9 a.m. This was yesterday. The encampment borders both sides of the I-5 express lanes, Wallingford on one side and the University District on the other. So UW is on, uh, it's on the eastern side of I-5 and Wallingford, which is kind of, uh, it's been a nice residential community. You got some views overlooking Lake Union. You know, I've appraised there, I don't know how many hundreds of homes in both the U District and Wallingford. Back in the day, they were nice areas, especially Wallingford, some upper, you know, um, bigger, more substantial homes, especially ones with views looking at, you know, right south at downtown Seattle with the skyline with the Space Needle right there. I mean, you got some cool stuff. But when you've got in a big encampment underneath the Ship Canal Bridge, underneath I-5, yeah, that's not that cool. And then when you got kids, literally, I don't know how many second walk this. Is this a minute walk away, two minute walk away, something like that? I mean, are we just waiting for one of these kids to have something really bad happen to them? It kind of feels like that's it. Because we've already had fireworks exploding on the freeway. We've had residents of this encampment running across the freeway at night. You know, it's just the list goes on and on and on. Fires. And that's why we're handing out fire extinguishers. It's like, here guys, here you go. You know, when you light your tent on fire, now you can be responsible. Down in Portland, you know how they're how they're solving uh, that? Um, new commissioner, city commissioner, Rene Gonzalez, he is saying, ixnay to the tents nay and the tarps nay. He's saying no tents, no tarps, because you guys are lighting these things on fire and it's impacting everybody. Fire department's having to come out way too often. Last year, they handed out, I, I, I want to say it's like 22,000 tents. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. And you know what happens to those tents? They end up in the garbage because when they do a homeless encampment sweep, most of them get left behind and people just start over. Some people take them down, but most of the time they're just destroyed, as is the environment as is the ground, as is the water in these areas. I mean, it is just, it's, you know, total mess. You, you've just got, you know, hypodermic needles everywhere. It's, it's wild that we allow this to happen. So what's our answer? What's Department of Transportation who owns the land where this, this encampment is? There's a fire extinguisher. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I laugh, but it's not funny because it's so ridiculous. It's referred to as the Pasadena encampment by regional partners because one of the nearby cross streets is Pasadena Place Northeast. Officials previously told Como News that they believe about 30 people are living unsheltered at the site. It's way more than that. It's way more than that. Neighbors have expressed concerns over the encampment, which is near John Stanford International School, a Wallingford Elementary School. The site has seen several recent fires and three shootings, and it's still there. It's still there. I mean, this this tells you everything you need to know about Seattle government. He had three shootings. Three. And one, the guy died and he was in his tent as it was catching on fire. <laughs> I mean, you literally can't make up what is absolute tragedy to a community. And yet, you got to remember, 
The policies that allowed this to happen were voted in by people in said community. So you got to reimagine and you got to rethink maybe a little bit of your leadership. I've seen the encampment double or triple in size in the last year, and it's become a ticking time bomb. Parent Eli Hosher recently told the Seattle City Council, it's clear that the encampments are becoming more and more dangerous. There have been three shootings and the Ship Canal Bridge is still there, parent Emily Houston said. It should have been done yesterday. If something happens to a kid, I guarantee action would happen the next day. Parent Tracy Grammer has said, I just feel like we are caught in a government bureaucracy where we are wasting time and money and potentially lives. 100% agreed. But you know what we don't have to worry about? Hey, they're going to have fire extinguishers. Yep, they are. So what's it going to take? What's it going to take to get a homeless encampment like this cleared out? It's going to take some tragedy, isn't it? It's going to take some tragedy because meanwhile, you know, while these governmental entities are that are tasked with homelessness that are requesting billions of dollars, I think the new request is like eleven and a half billion dollars to really just eradicate the homeless crisis in in Seattle. That's I think the the, the magic number right now because we're going to build X Y Z number of units and then we're going to get all these people into housing. The absolute absurdity to that equation, and that's kind of the housing first philosophy, which is once you get people into housing and to stabilize their lives, they're going to be fine. They're going to work it out. The problem is, is that these people living in the ship encampment bridge, in the ship, uh, ship canal bridge, they're drug addicts that don't want to get off drugs. Plain and simple. They don't want housing if it comes with any kind of strings attached. And if they take said housing, they're going to tear it apart in a fit of rage at some point in time. And then you know what? You and I as the taxpayers, we're going to cover that bill. We're just going to pay for that bill because that's where all this money is going towards that and covering the salaries of the folks who are doing the housing first thing, the housing authorities. So if you're okay with that program, I say keep on going because it's going to keep you know, this, this type of thing right here is going to keep on going. You have so many encampments and you've created such a situation with a lifestyle that's out of control because let's, let's be honest. The bottom line here is you've got people wildly addicted to drugs. Their lifestyles are not conducent to moving indoors. Folks in the encampments can't live indoors. They are living like animals addicted to drugs. You put them indoors. That's not going to work out. We're seeing how that's working out down in Los Angeles with the Skid Row Housing Authority. It's not going well. It's not a happening. They're about to go bankrupt. They're about to lose the 29 properties that they have because of basically financial mismanagement. And the, the interim CEO comes right out and says, yeah, we take these people, we put them into housing, they tear it apart. We get them the help that they need, whatever services they need, rinse, repeat, they tear it apart again. We move them back into housing. They tear it apart a third time. He literally laid this out. This is what's going on. On top of the buildings that the Skid Row Housing Authority has are old and they're falling apart and they don't have the resources to cover it. So you've literally got entities that are just spinning their wheels. And so, you know, building thousands and thousands of housing units for wildly addicted drug addicts. You, you got to go down the road of some treatment. You got to throw some people in jail and you got to get some people some mental health care. But we're not doing any of those three. We're just building housing, which, you know, isn't going to work. Because what I would say is, hey, look at the Ship Canal Bridge encampment right now. Because we're already spending, what, a couple hundred million? City of Seattle is 250, 250 million on housing. And how's that going? We've got to big ship canal bridge encampment that we can't seem to do anything but here's your fire extinguisher good luck with that hey do you know how to use this i mean are they giving out fire extinguisher orientations you got to pull that pin and you know you got to press you got to make sure it's pressurized you got to look and see what the expiration date is kind of like when the fire marshal comes through your office complex all right this one's expired we need you to get a new one now, you got to give people orientation. So you can't just hand out equipment and expect people to know how to use it. You know, I'm completely joking, but that's the absolute, you know, lunacy of this whole deal, of this whole situation. But you know what? It didn't pop up overnight. 
This has been brewing for years. And this is what you get with this kind of policy that we've got in place in Seattle, just allowing everybody to live willy nilly and you decriminalize all the drugs and you decriminalize crime in general. Here's where you are. So what are you going to do? Yeah, you're going to have to have some leaders step up and provide some solutions that are going to be hardcore. Do we have that? Do we have the tolerance? Does Seattle have the tolerance to handle that? I don't know. I kind of think not. I mean, honestly, I kind of think city of Seattle, people are, you know, they're too wishy-washy. They're too weak. And they're just going to say, no, we kind of like it this way. Yeah. Then keep living with your ship canal bridge encampment because that's what you're going to get. It's what's going to happen. It's what is happening. So till catastrophe happens, you know, I don't expect much to to take place here. I think what will happen is this encampment will get swept. It'll take a long time. uh, Or the governor just puts his foot down and says, damn it, rip that bad boy out of there because it's such an embarrassment. But will that happen? I don't know. We've got a plan though. Don't worry. We've got a plan. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good luck with that. That's it for me. Thanks so much for being here. I'll catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now.